question reads, how do you find the absolute maximum and minimum of a function? Um, so when we're calculating absolute maximum and minimum of a function, we have to be worried of a few things. So the first thing is that we need to make sure that a function is within a closed interval. And this is because that many functions have the absolute maximum and or absolute minimum, which is infinity or negative infinity. So if you were to include the whole set of real numbers, um, we will be considering the absolute max or the absolute min to be infinity or negative infinity. That's a lot of different functions already. Uh, the second thing is that um, we need to make sure that our function is continuous within the bounds. And that is because um, if the function is not continuous within our interval, then there's no point in calculating the absolute max, absolute minimum, because it might not even exist in those intervals. So that's the two things that we need a note of. But here's a general algorithm or formula of how finding the absolute min and absolute max of a function. So the first thing is that we need to find the critical numbers within the interval. So that means that we need to solve for the derivative of our function. And by doing so, we have to set our derivative to equal to zero and find the values of x that satisfy our, 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 our derivative to be equal to zero. Okay. Once we find all the critical numbers of interest, then we plug in those critical numbers from step one and the endpoints, and we evaluate it into our original functions to find the y values of those critical points and the end points of our interval. And by doing so, we're able to identify the largest y value and the, the, the smallest y value to be our absolute max and absolute min, respectively. Okay, so first let me um, draw out the rationale of why finding the critical numbers are very important. All right, so here, let's say that we have a function here, and I'm just going to make it a parabola. Okay, so we have a function here, and it's a parabola. Okay, and let's say that we want to examine the uh, function and its absolute maxes and absolute mins in the interval from um, this area, I guess from one to like four. Okay, so we want to evaluate our parabola from one to four. Okay, these are just random intervals, okay? So when we're evaluating it, right, we could either look at our function itself and visually identify where our absolute max and absolute min are, right? So the absolute max at this point here would be like our endpoints, right? Our endpoints will be like here, I guess, and like here. Okay, let's say our, 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 our endpoints end up here, right? So if I were to draw a dotted line up, it would like end up here. And so these are absolute maxes, right? So I'm going to just label this as such. So these are what we call the absolute max. And we find that because we evaluate the endpoints of our function, okay? So what about absolute min? The absolute min will be here, right? If we were to visually identify this as our absolute min. Okay? And when I talk about absolute max and talk about absolute min, I'm talking about within the closed interval that we specified, okay? So now that we have identified these points, what is really uh, 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 convenient about the absolute min is that uh, the tangent line at this point is equal to zero. And there's a theorem in calculus, and there's actually, uh, this theorem is pretty popular, which states that um, the critical points of the first derivative of a function relates to either a max, a min, or a saddle point. So using this information, this is why it's very important for us to calculate the critical points of a derivative. By, by calculating the critical points of a derivative, we're able to identify points of interest that might relate to our max, min, or um, a saddle point, right? And there's a second derivative test that we can use instead of plugging it into our function that will be able to allow us to identify what the max or min is of uh, our critical points of our first derivative. However, in this algorithm here, we simply have to identify our critical points or our points of interest and then plug them in and evaluate which one is the highest value and which one is the lowest value. The final thing that I want to note is that we evaluate the endpoints of our closed interval because the derivative uh, cannot calculate the tangent line at this point. And this is because simply because of the fact that uh, it might not accurately reflect um, the, the whole function in itself. So that's why we calculate the endpoints separately and not, don't use the, um, I guess, the, the, the derivative to calculate the endpoints in that sense because the endpoints are might be the absolute max or absolute min, but it might not have a tangent line with a slope of zero. So with that in mind, we're going to use an example to just uh, clarify everything. So 
the example here gives us the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 into interval of x of negative 3 and 5. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to evaluate what f prime of x is. So f prime of x, if we derive this, is going to be 3x squared minus 6x. Okay, now that we have derived it, we want to set f prime of x to be equal to 0. So we've set it to equal to 0, we have 3x squared, whoops, 3x squared minus 6x equals 0. And we're going to find the critical points. So we're going to factor out 3x here, and we're going to have x minus 2 equals 0. And we're going to solve for the values of x that make it equal 0. And the two values of x that makes this equation equal 0 is x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay, so now our critical points and our endpoints that we want to evaluate are 0, 2, negative 3, and 5. So we want to evaluate each of these points and see which one is our absolute max and absolute min. Okay. So let's evaluate f of negative 3 first, and that's going to be equal to negative 27 minus 3 times 9 plus 1. That's equal to negative 27 minus negative 27, negative 53. Okay. Next, we want to evaluate f of 0. And that's going to be equal to 0 minus 0 plus 1, and that's equal to 1. Next, we want to evaluate uh, f of 2, which is equal to 8 minus um, 12, yep, plus 1, and that's equal to negative 4, negative 3. And finally, we want to evaluate f of 5, which is the other endpoint, and that's going to equal to 5, 1, 25, minus 75 plus 1, so 51, okay, make sure I evaluate all our points here, okay, sure, nice, um, so once that we evaluate all the points, now we can label which ones are absolute max and absolute min, so our absolute min is the point f of negative 3, or, so f of negative so negative 3 and negative 53 is the absolute min. And um, 5 and 51 is the absolute max. Okay, so in this case, it ended up being that the endpoints were the min and maxes of our function. But this is not always the case. Uh, sometimes the, your critical points at indeed actually end up to be your absolute max, absolute min. But in this case, um, our endpoints ended up to be the min and max. So the solution is correct. Good work. And if you want to delve deeper, you guys can search up the second derivative test and how it relates to